Motion Builder 2013 delivers robust new tools that help production teams more reliably acquire, aggregate, and refine data, and offers a new nonlinear editing paradigm for virtual production. With the option to record live motion data directly to disk, support for broadcast WAV files, and the ability to output serial digital interface video, Motion Builder 2013 better supports a modern production pipeline. In addition, extended linear editing tools, ZDEP selection tools, and targeted performance enhancements accelerate everyday workflows. Also, with a flexible new heads-up display and a floating viewer, animators and directors can benefit from views optimized for their individual requirements. The first thing that we're going to look at are some of the improvements that have been made to Story, Motion Builder's nonlinear editor. Live data recording to disk and Story enables motion capture or certain other live data input to be recorded directly to disk rather than memory. This is great for studios because they're no longer limited by the amount of data they can record into RAM, only by the size of their hard disks, effectively enabling them to record take after take in rapid sequence, so you'll never really lose the momentum that you have on stage or on set. It's very easy to set up inside a motion builder. So in this example, what we've got is we've got some motion capture data that's driving our character here, and we want to stream this information directly to disk through story. It's very easy to do. All I have to do is go ahead and switch the toggle instead of recording to memory. We'll switch it to the disk sign. And we'll bring up the record options that are available directly on the character track inside of Story. Specify the path, which is my home directory, that's fine. And then obviously these are all the nodes that are going to get written out into that disk-based file. So all we have to do is rewind our playback head, turn on record, and as soon as I play this back, you can see that we're now streaming that data to disk. We get this nice representation in the story window of the clip that's getting written to disk. And notice the name that's been added to this. So it's got some nice, uh, some nice tokens that have been set up for this character track. So these tokens allow you to integrate this into your facility and use it with any asset management systems that you may have. So all the takes that you do get recorded to disk and they're kind of grayed out until you want to begin working with them inside a story. To do that, all you have to do is right mouse click on any of the given clips and go ahead and load those in. And once they're loaded into the system, we can begin working with them directly in story like any other assets. So we'll switch our source to be our control rig, which is Motion Builder's HIK rig. And as soon as I do that and I scrub through my story timeline, this is now what's driving my character. So obviously if I start making some changes to the position of that clip, or that, that clip inside a story, it updates in my viewer. Now I don't really like the walk of this girl coming up. It doesn't really feel appropriate for this, for this, for this asset, this character here. So I do like the set. So what I want to do is I want to use some of Story's great nonlinear editing tools to assist me in replacing the front half of that walk cycle. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of drag that over to the end here and we'll bring in some, some more animation, another walk cycle here. And as I scrub through this, you can see obviously that walk cycle is in a different position. So we'll use some of the uh, existing tools, sort of the classic tools inside of Story to, to get these clips lined up. And then we'll look at some of the new enhancements that allow us to, to work with uh, multiple clips and multiple tracks at a very high level. So the first thing I want to do is find a, a, a frame where this foot looks like at the end of this clip is really where that foot sort of landing and her, her other leg sort of sort of back there. We want to find a matching sort of position where that foot lands and that other leg sort of back. So maybe somewhere right around there looks like it's pretty good. And we want to use these clip matching uh, tools that Stories always had to get these two clips to really line up in world position. So the second clip here, I know I don't want to change its position because I need that girl to actually sit down on that Porsche. But what we want to do is we want to have this first clip right here actually get its world position modified based on my current selection, which is that, that girl's leg there. So we'll bring up our auto matching. So we're going to tell it to match to the next clips because we want that clip to stay stationary. And we'll just have it kind of blend between those two. So as soon as I do that, you can see that we now have a nicer uh, a nicer look to this. There's a little bit of pop there, so we'll just sort of overlap those guys by a few frames. Just have a little couple frame dissolve on those, and that looks pretty good. So now that we've got these clips sort of matched up, looking good, you'll notice that I've got this camera inside of here. Inside of Story, we can represent lots of different data types. So we can go ahead and insert uh, generic animation tracks, character animation tracks, what we were just working with, or in this example, a camera animation track. In that camera animation track, I'm going to go ahead and tell it that this is the camera that I want to have associated with that track. And I want to get that animation data in here so I can begin working with it in a nonlinear fashion. So all I have to do is right mouse click and say, insert current take. So now what we have is we've got a couple of different tracks, a camera track and a character track in three different clips. And I want to begin making timing changes and editorial changes to these all at the same time. And we now have the ability to do that very efficiently inside of Motion Builder with the story clip grouping. So this is, uh, it's really easy to set up. All I have to do is go ahead and insert a new folder. And in that folder, just start dragging and dropping the different tracks that I want to begin working with. And all I have to do is simply enable those, the previews for those, 
for that, that summary track for that folder. So with that summary track enabled, I can obviously begin moving that folder around. So I'm changing the timing of all the different tracks, the position of all those different tracks. And I can also start to make some timing changes to that. So we'll just put it to a scale function here. And you can see that I can basically start scaling these down. If I increase this, the, the walk cycle on that, you'll see that that folder expands to kind of encompass the overall size of all those different tracks. So we can make timing changes to these, uh, positional changes, and cutting and editorial changes using this new clip summary. So the next thing that we want to talk about that's, uh, that's kind of cool are some of the improvements that have been made to our ability to handle audio inside of Motion Builder 2013. We now support broadcast WAV files, which give us um, the professional broadcast file format that has embedded time code so we can more accurately interpret. As a result, the video and audio files can be easily synchronized. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop that. And I'm actually going to just throw that in this folder also. And we'll just sort of position this back down here. And if we, if we play this back, you'll get a, a sense of what that audio sounds like. All right, so right where that girl sits down, I want to actually take this and I want to cut all of those clips back to that spot. So you can see I razored that folder. It allows me to really quickly um, make a, an edit change to all of those multiple clips, again, using that clip summary. And if I start to make a timing change to this, notice what happens is that audio is now going to play back at 0.6 speed. So the ability to not only support broadcast wave files is new in 2013, but also the ability to retime audio has been added to this release. And if we go ahead and we can view through that camera, it'll actually look a little bit better here. All right, so the next thing that we want to talk about quickly is the heads-up display. So the heads-up display is it's really pretty awesome. It allows you to have static objects and dynamic objects, text fields, bitmaps, um, flash files, aspect maps, uh, maps, it can be dynamically driven. It can have properties that are being driven by uh, relation constraints. It's a really powerful heads-up display generator that's inside of Motion Builder 2013. And I've already got one that I built here. We'll just drag and drop that on this. You'll notice that I can add it to the current camera of the whole scene. And in this one, I've got a couple of things that are going on. If we expand this out, you can see that I've got some bottom black bars. So these are just static objects. Again, I could adjust where they, where they live. If we scrub through our time slider here, let's actually just jump back into story and mute that audio clip here. So if we if we look at the um, the time, it's obviously being driven from the time head here. The take is being taken from whatever current take we're on here. So there's some dynamically driven objects. We've got a focal length that's kind of coming in here. So again, that's based on our camera focal length. We've got some bitmaps, and as I mentioned before, flash files. So animated flash files could also be being brought into here. So it's a very powerful heads-up display that's now included in 2013. The next thing that I want to really quickly talk about is the ability to have a floating window. So this allows the artist and the director each to have their own view. This floating window could be dragged out to a separate monitor. Um, and the other thing that's really kind of powerful about these floating windows is it has the ability to also work with the SDI broadcast video out. So if you needed to get some Genlock reference coming out that's required if you're trying to do some real-time video output for offline editorial, you now have that option. So if we go ahead and we bring up our video out window and just jump up to a two-up view, let's just go into a two-up view here and we make that guy live, you can see that we've got our original uh, camera which is our director view that's got that heads-up display. And then we've got sort of the 3D version of what the driver would have, which would be the artist driving the scene, sort of represented over here on the right-hand side. And again, this could be dragged out and dropped onto a separate monitor or used with the broadcast out through the SDI. So the last thing that I want to quickly talk about is the ability to pick through uh, transparent objects, so kind of a Z-depth selection function that's been added to this release. So. Previously, if we turn this off, I pick a transparent object, I'm always going to basically select that object. And if I wanted to get in here and maybe grab that steering wheel or some of the objects that lived inside of here, it was kind of difficult to do. We now have the ability to switch our pick selection mode that allows me to pick through transparent objects. So if I want to go in there and grab that steering wheel, I can now do that. The thing that's kind of cool about this is it will also look to the alpha channel. So if I go and I pick on um, the logo here, which is obviously opaque, it selects the glass window, the front windshield of the car. But if I pick through an area that's transparent, I have the ability to do that Z-depth selection or pick through that object. So it's a really nice new feature when you're working with maybe um, cards that you've placed or sprites or things like that. The ability to pick through those based on the alpha channel is a very, very powerful feature. 
So those are some of the new features that are in Motion Builder 2013. We saw the improvements to story, the live data recording directly to disk, the ability to take clips and group them together, broadcast wave file format support, as well as the ability to retime audio, the really cool new heads-up display that's both dynamic objects and static objects, things that can be procedurally driven based on any of the attributes inside of your scene. Then we saw the video out and the floating viewer, as well as the new ZDEP selection.